Hey guys, my name is Tom from Filmatura and welcome to quick cam tip or something. Uh, I'm not good at coming up with names for videos and stuff, so this is just a really quick tip on how to get um, Fusion Probe WCS working. Now, in my case, I have the Haas Post, the Jarig Haas Post or what it's called, that works with all Haas next gen control machines. I have no clue and I cannot help anybody with any other machines than this. I just don't have, didn't have to set anything up. But I want to show you. I've got this part, op 2, right? Um, if you're interested in this part, it's an uh, Garand x -Trick ADS uh, aluminum jaw that has talon grips in it. Um, to save on, you know, not having to machine this out of metal and then harden and do all of that stuff, just kind of simplifying my life a little bit. Um, but we have the OB2 here, and it gets roughed, it gets cleaned up, then it gets probed, and then everything other, all, all the essential stuff gets done after that. So this is where we probe the WCS. So the way I have it set, so the, the Autodesk uh, tutorial that's on their YouTube channel is great but to me I couldn't I, I it took me a long time to understand it basically you need to set one work offset as your vice zero or some zero that can consistently be at the same place on your machine table all of the time and it won't change to me I set that at the middle of device so I probed the saddle of device or whatever you want to call it the surface D surfaces touch for Z that's Z and then I closed the jaws with some kind of block in between straight block of course so it was a one two three block and I probed this and this surface and the center of it is my Y center and I probed this and this surface center of it which is my X zero that way I get here and that's the zero of the device and that's my G59. Now, you don't need to actually tell Fusion to use G59, you actually need to tell it to use G54, which is a little confusing. Here, G54. Just keep it G54. You okay? It's gonna error out for me. Um, so, when you want to probe, you select setup, probe WCS, select your surface, like somewhere here let's say, and then go into here, actions, and you need to check all right driving WCS, otherwise it's going to use G54, this way it's going to use G54 and it's going to update G54. G54, so if you had G54 set somewhere lower, it would crash your spindle or your probe uh, into the workpiece for example, so you check this, okay? And WCS override 6, what this means, 6, is basically G59, but why is it so confusing? Fusion for some reason, Autodesk for some, some Fusion, the, uh, sorry, the way Autodesk built Fusion is that while they say G54 to G59 at some places, they say 1 to 6 at some other places, so it's super weird. Anyways, G54 is number 1. G55 is number 2, G56 is number 3, G57 is number 4, G58 is number 5, and G59 is number 6. So that's how it works basically. That's why there's a 6 and there's a 1 here, which is G54. So it's gonna, the probe is gonna use G59 to move around when probing, G59 because we said 6 if we want to use G58 we tell it to use 5 which is G58 and it's gonna update G54 because that's what we set here so we do OK basically that's exactly it I'm gonna delete it because I already have it preset here and this is how it looks so let me slow it down a little bit and let me okay here you can see take a look at the work offset here I think that should change so we're at G54 we just face it off because our Z is set by the uh, by parallels that are set on our Z0 so we don't have to probe the top at all
And here we are, work offset G59, probe it, done, and we're G54 back. And now it's correctly set up, correctly moved in wherever it should be. And then it just gets machined, the rest of it. So it's that easy. Now I do have one fair warning that um, made me ruin my jaws. Um, and that's if you probe the Z at any point, G54Z, you need to probe Z again in every subse subsequent operation later on. So any other thing you're machining with G54 use, if you probe the Z, like if I decided to probe the Z here, like that, I'm going to move my G54, which I right now have set right here. I actually set my G54 to the same coordinates. Mainly mainly important is Z for me and Y, because I have a self-centering vice. Y always remains at the same spot and Z always remains at the same spot, because that's how I probed it and that's how I set it up. And what messed me up is I probed the Z height of off stock that was taller than it should have been or le uh, sorry that was not as tall as it should have been and I faced off part of my jaws completely and ruined them so my workaround on how to avoid this completely is super simple don't ever probe Z probe it once at the beginning set G54 Z to be the same as G59 Z so just bottom of device where, where parallels gets placed or whatever and if you have a self-centering vice you can do the same for for y as well um, or you actually even without a self-centering vice you can do it but um, I just haven't think about it because I don't have to I have a s two self-centering vices and that's actually it you then never probe Z you always when you probe you probe just X and X is the only moving part of G54 in my setups because I don't have to move Z. I, I know the exact Z location, you know, and this way I can make sure that even if I put completely different stock, I will never mill into my jaws and I will never have a collision with the jaws. I could have a collision if I put like much larger stock. I've had a couple of times where I put larger stock and I was facing it at, at a higher depth than I was supposed to. So it's it could be good to have a little uh, inspection probe, probe geometry at the beginning, probe the top, put some tolerance in size like one millimeter and just, just do wrong size um, and okay. And that this would basically probe the Z and make sure the stock is correct. Um, but you don't necessarily need to do that. So yeah, that's that's the way you're supposed to probe with Fusion. That's how I understood it and that's how it's been working for me um, since I set it up. And I hope I was able to clear some of the confusion that I initially had. I uh, For sure it took me quite some time and a few broken jaws um, to be able to, to learn this and, and make sure it works the way it's supposed to. So yeah. Thanks a lot. If you like this, subscribe because I'm going to have a lot more coming. I spent all my days in front of cam and part of my days in front of my CNC. So I, I have a lot that I'm going to be filming in the future. So yeah, basically that's it. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.